It's coming from verse 3. Yet let us know him. Let us be zealous to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared and Satan has the dawn. And he will come to us as the laharine and the latter, sorry, the former rain, as the latter rain that waters the earth. And then verse 11. Also, O Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you, when I will return my people from their captivity, in which they are slave to their misery, brought on by their own sins. I want to talk for a short while on spiritual rain. I'm not going to be here long. We're going to talk for short order on spiritual with our heads. Father, thank you once again for this time of praise and worship that we can gather here in this building to worship you and to share your word. Now, God, let me decrease so that you may increase. And Father, let your word be manifested in the lives of this people that they will experience the manifestation of the spiritual life, spiritual reign. On their lives in Jesus' name. And all God's people say. Amen. And all God's people say. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, I want us to, to let's get, take our positions. We don't want them all moving down. I'd like to get to teach the word of God. Really, most preachers don't really preach about Jose. Because Jose is what we consider a minor prophet. We always look at the major prophets. But every prophet in the Bible had a ministry or had an assignment from God that they were called to do. And each of you here today, first of all, although you may not carry the title of a prophet, you also have an assignment that you have been called to do. Now, in Hosea's time, Israel and Judah was, was similar to what the Bahamas is today. Hosea lived in the 8th century before Christ was born. That's how far back he was. He lived in the 8th century. We, we can't even picture how far back that was. But he lived in the 8th century before Christ was born. During Hosea's time, Israel and Judah was experiencing much prosperity. Somebody say prosperity. prosperity. They were experiencing much prosperity. In other words, then, let's put it simple. Things was good. Everybody was living good. Everybody wasn't rich. Everybody didn't have all the money, but everybody was living good. That's what I said like, when I could put how many people, how many my young people were working. It means that things were good for them. Amen? Yeah. But the problem was, although things were good, the spiritual and the moral fabric of the country was becoming weakened. Why? Why was it getting weak? Because the more people got what happened, the more they wanted. The pocket books became more important than souls. That's why I thought you're going to have to gamble. Because some people, to them, their pocket books are more important than souls. And there are some of us in the church who have gotten caught up in just trying to be wealthy more than going after souls. And so what God did to the children of Israel because they were going after materialistic things, he dried up their wealth. He tore them to pieces. Yes, I told him. He broke up everything concerning them. Let me tell you something. A lot of things began to get broke up in this country. Some of you may not agree. But there are some things and some people who are about to get break up in this country. 
Because they have turned away from God and gone after the materialistic things. There are some churches that never woke up in this country. Because they have pushed God on the side and gone after prosperity. So God has to do some tearing. Some ripping apart. You can visit one church one day and you see it full of members and you go back the next day where other people gone. Why? Because they've gone a hoaring after foreign gods. Now, Pastor, why you get here? You talk about spiritual ring. This is what I just supposed to be. You want to make sure in your life that where you are now, that you are not going after the physical, but you are going after the spiritual. If you go after the spiritual, all the man read the first he comes along with it. Because he says, seek ye first. The kingdom of what? God. And what? And what happened after that? All the things you're going after is automatically added to you. So we do not want to be caught up like the children of Israel who is going after wealth. You know what that reminds me of? I was coming to church this morning and I saw a young man who had his own business. And this kid back to me. He has his own business. He's licensed to operate on our corner to sell his food drinks. Where should this young boy come from a Christian family? Shouldn't he leave church on Sunday morning? And when I look at it, really, I stop for two minutes. See, nobody really stop in the Bible from the middle. Not on Sunday morning. Because most people are trying to raise themselves to church. Or who got to go away trying to raise themselves away? Now, after church, three, four o'clock, it would be nice to stop there to get a cool drink and you take in your family for a Sunday afternoon drive. What you think? Right. That's what we do. Sometimes we stop and on our, we get a cold drink and stop there. And I'm like, who's not going to make any money? All the money go here. So you know he's written, then you go back and get it, then you tell him. He should be in his house, in the house of God, on Sunday morning. See, people don't want their own business. You want your own love, buddy. That's right, that's right. You, you, you don't have to answer nobody. Right. You can open your shop and close your business as you see fit. That's why it's good to be an entrepreneur. Right. So you can move and operate as you please. God wants to wait for the man. We got to move as the man say move. Yes. Just tell you to go to wait. Yeah. That's only for a season. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but if you wait for yourself, then you don't need to go after, you don't need to be going after the mighty daughter all the time. I look at our nation I, and I say, wow, isn't it amazing to show up that Sunday is there to be no shop open? And tourists admire that. That we were such a blessed nation that no stores downtown would open. Now they open every day. So the people who was trying to get to church can't uh, get to church. Now, if it wasn't working in the hotel, it's still different. If you're a policeman, you're different. Because your duty calls nurses, your duty calls you to be different. But for those of you who wait for yourself, you take God time for your time. And then expect God to bless you. And then you want to, you want to read on your life. How could you want to read on your life when you only walk in, in the position to get the rain? So this morning I want to talk to you about spiritual reading. Because spiritual reading shows up where there's ground. Somebody say, I've got ground. I've got ground. Somebody say, I've got land. I've got land. Mm -hmm. Spiritual reading shows up where you have land. So if you have no land, then you cannot get no rain. Because every scripture the Bible speaks to me says, I will rain on your land. 
So, if you have a gift, it don't, it don't, it don't remain coming on your gift until you begin to operate this. I don't care how good you could sing. I don't care how good you could dance. I don't care what you could do. But no rain will come on your land until you begin to operate in it. So your land is not your gift. Your land is the operation of your gift. Somebody should write that down. That my land is the operation of my gift. My land is the operation of my gift. Now, you say you want spiritual rain on your land. Listen to me, people. Once you get land, don't care about this. Everybody landing coming good. Hmm? Some coming hard. The soil will be so hard that you can't dig it. That's why you need the rain. Because Kush, the first thing the rain does, it softens what? It softens the ground. So, so, so you could be like Abraham, you know. So you are not decide what you want. Come help me now. I want you to understand. Because you got people who compete with you for your land. You got people who want your land, but understand me, they cannot have your land. So you tell them, you take what you want. That's what Abraham told Lot. Look around you and see what if you go if you go left, Lot, I'll go right. Lot looked around and saw the best land. Now understand, the best land in its natural resources didn't mean that it was the best land by God's measure. Style. Huh? What you see as the best physically may not necessarily be the best spiritually. Because where Lot was going was a land that was close to Sodom and Gomorrah. As we know the story, eventually he was sucked in to the fears of Sodom and Gomorrah. But you have to choose the land that God tells you to go into. Come on, sister, because that's our problem. Being obedient to what God says. Somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I want you to pray. I said, Why? He said, I need God to forgive me. I said, Why do you need to pray? You need to go pray for yourself. I wasn't disobedient to God. You were disobedient. You need to go ask for forgiveness. Now, I don't need to pray for you. I'm not praying for you if you've been disobedient to God. So, she come with a sad story that she did this when God beat her inside there with two by four. I said, No, it wasn't God to beat the devil beat you. Because whenever you disobey the God, you can put you in the position so the devil can jack you up. You can put yourself. So she's coming over my head. Yeah, 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 totally. Because where God tells you to go, you didn't go. And if you go where God tells you to go, guess what? Your clouds are already there. Making the place on your land. So, so your spiritual reign is coming first of all to soften your ground. Look at that me when I go in the right direction this morning, things become easier for me. Why? Because I'm not going by myself. God is going with me. In fact, he's already gone before me. What the Bible says? And he set for every crooked path. And he's broken down every iron bow. And if he's going before me, that means before I get to the God of God already. So I don't have to struggle to get to the door. See, most of our struggles come because we go to the wrong door. Because we didn't go to the door. We didn't take the path that God sent us. And if you don't take the path that God sent you, there's going to be four holes in the fall in. And then God said, I'm coming to you for the, the, the part of it because you're his child. But sometimes we can avoid some pitfalls. We can avoid some troubles. We can avoid some silence and don't like to dance strong, strong with strong. You can avoid some storms. Just by walking the road that God tells you to walk. Just by being obedient. So, 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 when God softens my ground, then my walk becomes easier. When God softens my ground, then whatever I do becomes easier. So I need the rain to soften my ground. Are you with me? Now, <laughs> when the ground becomes soft, 
And you begin to dig it, there are some things you will find that you never thought was there. Are you listening? So that means then that when your ground becomes soft, you find your untapped resources. Some of the untapped resources. Because in the end, that ground, you don't even have to see them until it became soft. There are some minerals in the ground. Some of the minerals. Now, some of you don't understand what the, how, how important minerals are. But if you know anything but, but digging, then they dig in the ground. They find the minerals, they find the oil, and the, all that sort of things, and the gold. Those things are minerals, they are important. It's in the ground. God put everything in the ground. <laughs> so what am I trying to tell you? God put everything in your ground. It's not even when you find the ground. That's your problem. So you will always struggle in life because you have not found your ground. And what I'm trying to get you to do is walk the path to your ground. You are with me? Yes, mm -hmm. Now, the rain just only not softens the ground, but it breaks up the fallow ground. <laughs> Anybody know the word follow me? Any of my smart people put the word follow me? Follow. Anybody know the word follow me? Huh? It breaks up that shallow. Follow. Follow ground. Now listen. Follow simply means that the ground is there, but it's hard to break. You ever watch the fellow with a pickaxe? They be hitting the ground and he ain't getting no foil. And then, you know what happens? We give up. Because the ground is fallow. Not realizing that the same ground we given up on has our fruitfulness. But when our spiritual weed comes, it breaks up the fallow ground. And out of your fallow ground comes your fruitfulness. Somebody say fruitfulness. So this is your season of fruitfulness. That's why I'm trying to explain to you, Brittany. Don't look at what ground God gave you. And that's what happened to most of us. Because it don't look good. Let me tell you something. From you start this ministry, it's the worst building we ever been in. But it's the most fruitful building we ever been in. We is by the bridge, nice building, on Marquis Street, nice building, air conditioned piping. Only five of us is in there. <laughs> Me, Makiba, Makira, <laughs> couple of us, Valkyra. But we have a thought that this is just coming on the rainfall league would reap a bigger harvest. This is a harvest field. So it, 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 it happened because of our obedience. Rachel used to be so dying in there because she was the only dancer. She used to kill her. She had to dance every Sunday. Every blessed Sunday she had to dance. So suddenly I feel sorry when she said, I ain't dancing fast. I, I, feel, I feel it for her because I know from day one she was the first dancer to jump in the room. So suddenly I feel it the fast. I ain't feel for that this year. I understand something not all the time, man. but sometimes I understand. That she's been doing it so long. She was here from day one. I mean, we talk about Sunday she got danced and Wednesday sometimes she got danced too. Mark one, they read the scripture lesson every week. <laughs> but imagine if we didn't come to Wednesday. I mean, we never were being of, not being obedient to the Holy Spirit. We never would meet none of you who didn't come from Marky Street or didn't come with us. Because hardly any of you here came from Marky Street and, right. and under the bridge with us. But you have to understand that you have to be obedient. And although this ground is difficult, boy, look here. Look at what we're reaping now. Wow. Listen, when we come in here, here was a dump on both sides. That garbage high as the roof. You know what I'm High as the roof. The garbage was this high as the roof. Because we came in. He said we can use it as a jump in the shop. And, the one, and then one of the Lord said, no, 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 this is a church now. 
But imagine we've never met Kendi Lehman and Nishi and, and Onisha and, 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 and Destiny.